hi and welcome once more to my channel so in our today's lesson i want us to look at an example two on how we reduce block diagrams using the rules that, that we looked at previously so i've just uh, you can see that this block diagram is just very complicated so i had to plot the diagrams uh, in each step so that i do not consume too much time uh, plotting them so i just be explaining the rules that we apply then from there we will now obtain the transfer function so you can see that i have my input the summing point the gain block i have the two summing points i have this block another summing point like that so the first thing is for us to look at uh, the rule that will apply first so let us look at all these steps my step number one i'll be moving the takeoff uh, the takeoff point one before gain block two so you can see i have this the uh, takeoff point or the peak of point at this position i want to take this point from this position then i bring it before gain block two like that so i will take it i take it before gain block two then i will have my diagram like this i'll have the point at this position then you can see now my my gain block is ahead. Then from there, you have to we from the rules that we looked at. If I take the point before this gain block, then what I'm having in this block will be affected. And of course, I'll have now uh, to get h two times g two. Just multiply what I had here was g h uh, two times what is in this block that I've just taken the point before. So I'll have H2, G2 inside that block. That is my rule number one, not bro, step number one. Then from there, let us look at uh, step number two. And our step number two is interchanging uh, the summing points A and B. You can see in this diagram, I have the summing point A and summing point B. You can see when I place them like this, these points are just crossing each other so i want to ensure that uh, these uh, points do not cross each other or rather the, the lines do not cross each other and therefore i need to interchange those summing points so that this point if this summing point a will be at this position and then summing point b not this is a point a will be at this position then summing point B will be at this position. And you can see that uh, if I bring summing point A to this position, what I am having here is something like a closed loop. And then if I bring summing point B at this point, you can see I'm also having something that, like, that looks like a closed loop. And that's why I'm, la I'm uh, labeling them as loop one for this one. Then loop two for the whole of this loop, then I'm having loop three like that. So it's just interchange those summing points so that we ensure that the lines do not cross each other. Let us look at uh, rule number three or step number three. Uh, our step number three, our step number three is uh, combining the parallel blocks H1 and G2 and also finding the transfer function of loop one. So my viewers, uh, you can see that uh, H1, this is H1 and G2 are in parallel to each other, simply because I have this arrow coming towards this point, and then I have the other arrow from H1 coming towards this summing point, which indicates that the two blocks are in parallel with each other, so this step, we're going to combine those two parallel blocks and we'll also obtain the transfer function of this loop one here. So that we have, uh, so that we have uh, the parallel uh, combination. We seen that for you to combine two parallel blocks, you just add them. So just take G2 plus H1, we will have uh, G2 plus H1, the parallel block. 
Then we have the transfer function of uh, loop one. We say that the transfer function is the same as the control ratio. And this control ratio, C over R, is equals to 1 over 1 plus G2H2, simply because what I have in the forward path is, uh, is 1, so I just indicate 1 here. Then I have over 1 plus G2H2. Then after having that, I redraw the diagram again. So I can write this one, redrawing. I can have a redrawing the diagram. Then I'll have uh, my input, the summing point. I have this block. Then I have uh, this one here. I had combined loop one by obtaining the transfer function. So I got one over one plus G2 H2. Then I combined the parallel block. I, ha I have G2 plus H1. Then I include my now my G3. Then I complete the loop. So here I have H3. I have the output, then I have now the feedback like that. So we have to ensure that after every step, we redraw the diagram again to make it easier for us to, to know the next step. So let us look at uh, step number four. Our step number four is combining the series blocks. And we're saying that uh, you can see we have uh, this series block. This is the 1 plus G2 H1, H, sorry, H2 is in series with this block and in series with this block. And we're saying that uh, for you to combine series or cascade blocks, you need to multiply them. So I'll combine these three blocks by multiplying them so that I have the first block times the second block times the third block. And this will give me G3 into G2 plus H1 over 1 plus G2 H2. So when I multiply all these three blocks, that this is what I have. This is what I have. So I still now need to, I need to, I need to plot or redraw the diagram again, representing the three of them in one block. So that if I plot the diagram, I will have, uh, I will have, this is my input, I have this block. Now you can see I still have my summing point here. And then the three blocks, I represent them in one block like this. I have my output, I still have this H3 here. Then my complete, uh, that is the feedback. That's what we have. And then from there, we need now to look at the next step. And the next step is the uh, obtaining the transfer function or control ratio of loop two. As you can see from uh, the fourth step, this one here, uh, I'm having the forward path one loop, and the feedback path I have one loop. So th this one is forming my loop two. This is forming my loop two. And when we were looking at a uh, block diagram production techniques, we're saying that wherever we have uh, a closed loop control system, or a closed loop system, we can uh, represent it or replace it with an open loop system by having the transfer function or the control ratio. So in our case, if we obtain the control ratio of a uh, loop two, then we'll have, uh, we think that C over R is our transfer function is equals to G over one plus or minus GH. And this G is what we have in the forward path and H is what we have in our feedback path. So this one control ratio will be equivalent to G and G is the whole of this block here, which is a, I've just written it here, divide by one plus, I can, I can eliminate this minus. So I have one plus G, which is still the whole of this block. I've just indicated it here, then times H. And in this case, H is what we have in our feedback path. And what I'm having here is H3. So I'm going to multiply the whole G times H3. So that if I multiply, I will have G3, H3, then into G2 plus H1 all over this one. And you can say, you have to note that this one is the same as over one. So that for us to proceed, we need to combine the two parts by having the LCM 
because the whole of this is the same as having G3 into G2 plus H1 over 1 plus H2 G2 divided by 1 over 1 plus G3 H3 into G2 plus H1 over 1 plus H2 G2. So the first thing I need to combine the two of them, these two, by getting the LCM. So the LCM of uh, 1 and 1 plus H2 G2 is 1 plus H2 G2. So I just need to get this LCM 1 plus H2 G2 divided by 1 is just 1 plus G2 H2. Then times this 1, I'll have 1 plus G2 H2. Then plus, I have... 1 plus H2 G2 divided by 1 plus H2 G2 is 1. Then times the whole of this value I'll have G3 H3 into G2 plus H1 like that. And then from there, from my mathematics now, we're saying that if you have any division sign, we change the sign to be multiplication. So I, I have to change the division sign to be multiplication. But now... I'll multiply this one by the reciprocal of what I have on the other part. So I just have uh, this value here times, now the reciprocal is the uh, 1 plus H2 G2, this one here, divided by this one now becomes the denominator, 1 plus G2 H2 plus G3 H3 into G2 plus H1. Then after doing that, you can see that this value here and this value are the same, so they'll just cancel each other. And then you remain with this one over this one, what I have here. That becomes the control ratio of the transfer function of our loop 2. Then after doing that, of course, I will redraw my diagram again, so that if I plot the diagram again and have a, something that looks like this, and you can see that uh, I've now reduced the block diagram up to this point so that I have only this one block in my forward path and then I have this other block in the feedback path. And of course, if I'm not given any gain block, we think that our h will be equal to 1 because I'm not given any value. It should be equivalent to 1. So the whole of this is now my canonical canonical diagram my canonical diagram so now after after reducing that complicated block diagram to a canonical diagram i can now obtain the transfer function of now that diagram so let us look at uh, the transfer function this transfer function our c over r is equals to g over one plus g h so this one will be equivalent to G1, G3. Uh, before we proceed, I'm very, very sorry. In our initial block diagram, we had G1, which I've not included here. So I just say, uh, because this block will be in series with the G1, I will include my G1 here. I'm sorry for, the, for that mistake. G1 was in series with this block, so I just need to multiply them so that I have G1, G3 into g2 plus h1 all over this as my forward block so now from there we can obtain the transfer function the transfer function will be equals to g1 t3 into g2 plus h1 then divide by 1 plus g2 h2 plus g3 h3 then into G2 plus H1. That is now my forward element. Then divide by 1 plus. Still G. G is the same as this term. So I'll have G1, G3 into G2 plus H1. Then all over 1 plus G2, H2 plus G3, H3 into G2 plus H1, like that. 
so that after having that for me to proceed for me to proceed i need to, uh, to combine these two terms because the same as one over one so that if i take the lcm of these ones so the whole of this term here i will have uh, the lcm here is 1 plus g2 h2 plus g3 h3 into g2 plus h1 is our lcm so we take this uh, the whole of this value divided by 1 times 1 i'll have 1 plus g2 h2 plus g3 h3 into g2 plus h1 and then if i take this term divide by this term is 1 times this one is plus g1 g3 into g2 plus h1 that's what we have therefore we have um, the whole of this term now we will change this division sign to be multiplication and now multiply by the reciprocal of this term so i will have g1 g3 into g2 plus h1 then over 1 plus g2 h2 plus g3 h3 into g2 plus h1 i change now this sign i'll have times the reciprocal of this one is times 1 plus g2 h2 plus g3 h3 into g2 plus h1 and then over the whole of this which is the uh, 1 plus g2 h2 plus g3 h3 into g2 plus h1 i close the bracket then plus this one which is g1 g3 into g2 plus h1 that's what we have then from there you can see that these two values are the same so i can have this one being equals to one this one being equals to one so i just remain with uh, this one which is g1 g3 into g2 plus h1 divided by this value which is 1 plus g2 h2 plus g3 h3 into g2 plus h1 plus g1 g3 into g2 plus h1 and now this one becomes our control ratio c over r and that's how we reduce a block diagram and that's how we obtain the transfer function thank you for watching and please watch my next video for the next example thank you